the symbolism of the sun. The sun, when paired with the moon, is treated as a fiery masculine symbol, with the moon as a watery feminine symbol. The sun in this pairing is the creator of ideas, the moon as the one who gives birth to these ideas as form. She is then the great mother and mother nature. The symbolism thus casts the masculine father, her son, as the thinker, and the mother and moon as the practical one, who nurtures the ideas through their gestation to completion. And the symbolism works well, as long as one remembers everything is then the child of the great mother, Mother Nature. But many thousands of years ago, it seems that the feminine was regarded as the conceptual thinker, the one who came up with the ideas, and the masculine was looked on as the one who took the ideas and engineered them into some form of earthly solution. And indeed, this symbolism is used in the film The Matrix. The Matrix The Matrix film was first released in 1999 and is an American science fiction film written and directed by the Vakowskis whose biography is on our website because they use lucid dreaming to help them with their work. The Matrix is the ultimate reality. See our videos on reality and the order of creation and it is the perceptible world that is virtual, an illusion. And in the film, the Oracle is a woman and defines the plan. She knows everything that is going to happen and is the one with the ideas. The Oracle. I'd ask you to sit down, but you're not going to anyway. And don't worry about the vase. Neo, what vase? Neo accidentally breaks a vase. The Oracle, that vase. Neo, I'm sorry. The Oracle, I said don't worry about it. I'll get one of my kids to fix it. Neo, how did you know? The Oracle, what's really going to bake your noodle later on is, would you still have broken it if I hadn't said anything? And in contrast, the architect is a man and the programmer of the Matrix, the one who made the plan visible. Rather amusingly, despite his arrogance, he hasn't got it right yet. The architect. The Matrix is older than you know. I prefer counting from the emergence of one integral anomaly to the emergence of the next, in which case this is the sixth version. The first matrix I designed was quite naturally perfect. It was a work of art, flawless, sublime. A triumph equalled only by its monumental failure. The inevitability of its doom is as apparent to me now as a consequence of the imperfection inherent in every human being. Thus I redesigned it, based on your history, to more accurately reflect the varying grotesqueries of your nature. However, I was again frustrated by failure. I have since come to understand that the answer eludes me because it required a lesser mind, or perhaps a mind less bound by the parameters of perfection. He then continues by telling Neo, the hero of the tale, and a messianic figure, you are the eventuality of an anomaly which, despite my sincerest efforts, I have been unable to eliminate from what is otherwise a harmony of mathematical precision. So, 
In this case, the oracle would be classified as the sun, and the architect, for all his inflated ego and big words, is the moon. And towards the end of the film, it is the oracle who solves the problem the architect has created in order to stop a catastrophic systems error and the massive multiplication of evil. The sun as a goddess, Sol and Sulis. The sun goddess was worshipped widely throughout Germany, Scandinavia and other areas of Europe by both the Celts, where she was given the name Sulis, and the Norse, where she was known as Sol. In Norse mythology, Sol is described in the poetic Edda, compiled in the 13th century AD from earlier traditional sources. However, it's very clear the mythology is far earlier. This picture shows the Trunt home sun chariot from the Nordic Bronze Age discovered in Denmark. In both the Poetic Edda and the Prose Edda, she is described as the sister of the personified moon, Mani, the god male of the moon. There is a common proto-Celtic root, Suli, from which the Celtic female deity Sulis derives, related to the various Indo-European words for sun, including the Sanskrit Suryaya. And Solveig is a woman's name, and sung by a woman in Greek's Solveig's song. The sun as a goddess, ancient Egypt and Isis. If we now go back several thousand years to ancient Egypt, the earliest deities associated with the sun are all goddesses. Wajet, Sechmet, with a lioness's head, Hatha, Nut, Bast, Bat, and Menhit. Isis, one of the most important goddesses, also has strong solar connections. In some places, notably her famous temple at Philae, Isis was worshipped specifically as a sun goddess. The ancient Egyptians recognised the existence of an invisible, ultimate intelligence, and the sun and moon are then depicted as the eyes of this intelligence, the sun being the large eye and the moon a smaller eye. Among her solar epithets are female Hre, Hreet, and the Eye of Hre. Hre was equivalent in the Egyptian pantheon to the Creator in the Indian Trimurti, and was thus opposed to the destroyer, Apop, Greek Apophis, the father of the Apocalypse. This is one reason why the seven symbolic planets includes the sun and moon as planets. The system has an invisible ultimate intelligence with seven intelligences, all called planets for convenience, but which include two, the sun and moon, that in these modern, more literal times we would not regard as planets. Ancient beliefs then gave a special additional role to the sun and moon as eyes of the ultimate intelligence, with the female sun being the stronger of the two, almost like a symbolic spy hole in the heavens. Furthermore, it seems this eye was also, for them, the means by which change was effected from above. The eye of Ray was an active power. While Ray, the creator, stayed aloof in the sky, as befits the ultimate intelligence, the solar power the Eye Goddess went forth to enact this being's divine will. So why did the moon become feminine? Isis became associated with the moon when Egypt came under Greek rule in the 3rd century BC following the conquest by Alexander the Great. In other words, it was the rise of the masculine 
that forced the change, and it stayed. More about eyes. And once one investigates the idea of the sun and moon as symbolic eyes of a far more remote and unknowable deity, one starts to see it all over the world. Even in Islam, the sun is the eye of Allah. A Dictionary of Symbols J. E. Serlo Many indigenous people hold that the eyes of heaven are the sun and the moon, located on either side of the world axis. There are prehistoric drawings and engravings which may be interpreted after this fashion. Eliard notes that for the pygmies and bushmen, the sun is the eye of the supreme god. The Samoyeds see the sun and the moon as the eyes of heaven. From the Fairy Faith in Celtic Countries by W. Y. Evans Fence, 1911. The Reverend T. M. Morgan, Vicar of New Church Parish near Carmarthen, South Wales. My father said there used to be expressed in Cardiganshire a belief in reincarnation. This was in accord with Druidism, namely that all human beings formerly existed on the moon, the world of middle light and the Queen of Heaven. That those who there lived a righteous life were thence born on the sun and thence onward to the highest heaven. And that those whose moon life had been unrighteous were born on this earth. Through right living on earth, souls are able to return to the moon and then evolve to the sun and hence to the highest heavens. With no shortcuts, a eh, Icarus. Solstice. The winter solstice occurs when the most northern point of the earth is tilted furthest away from the sun. This results in the fewest hours of light and the most hours of darkness. The word solstice itself means standing still sun. The sun appears to stand still at this point for three days, after which it appears to move again and the hours of light begin to grow. The reason for this is because before and after the solstice, the declination speed is less than 30 arc seconds per day, which is undetectable to the naked eye. Solstice myths often contain this auspicious moment of the rebirth of the sun on the 25th of December and the growth of a new era, a new beginning, a fresh spring. And this is why this date is used to celebrate the birth of many sun gods, prophets and auspicious people, not just Jesus. Their birth dates are celebrated during the re-emergence of both nature and life after the moment of the deepest dark. Before it was renamed to Christmas, this time was celebrated as the pagan festivals of Yule and the Wild Hunt. But there is also the Iranian Yolanite, which comes from Zoroastrianism and can be traced back to well before 2000 BC. The festival of the unconquered sun Sol, Invictus and Saturnalia are connected with the solstice. And finally, the Indian festival of Lohi is also a solstice festival, but takes place after the month of the solstice has been observed.